Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. On today's episode, we speak to a woman named Shirley from Texas. Shirley has been in an online relationship with a man named Michael Lorenzo Roberts for a little over six months. The two met on LinkedIn and hit it off right away. At first, Michael came off as a normal guy who just worked a lot. The deeper Shirley would fall in love with him, the more problems Michael ran into. Shirley has spent thousands of dollars in hopes to meet this man face to face, but there's always an obstacle in the way. Let's hear more from Shirley and see if we can get more information about this mysterious man, Michael. Real quick guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. My name is Shirley. I live in Texas right now. My husband and I moved here a couple of years ago. My husband passed away July 23rd last year. And so I'm by myself with my dog. Shirley was just browsing on her LinkedIn account when she was contacted by this man, Michael. And this is when it all began. He said, how are you doing in this COVID world? It's nice to connect with you. And I said, I'm doing okay. I was still in a pity party at that time because um, I lost my husband. Shirley lost her husband last year. The two were happily married and even had their own YouTube channel. We did exchange photos. And he had a photo of him on a ship in, in little orange fatigues things that were dirty. I believed him. I'm not a naive person. I'm very hip when it comes to people. And I really can read people very well. But I didn't talk to him. I couldn't see him. So you can't see his his lips and his eyes and stuff. You just go through the text. So he said he was an engineer. He was off the coast of Mexico. I mean, we'd text three times a day, even though he was on that ship. He'd say, I'd have to go now. I'll text you later. And uh, every morning, you know, he would text me. And then at night, I mean, we would text till 10 and 11 o'clock at night. He has a son that's 15 years old and his name is Cole Roberts. Shirley really had a soft spot for children. She had five kids of her own, 12 grandkids, and nine great-grandchildren. She felt bad for Michael and his son because they were so far from each other. Michael told Shirley he would communicate with his son Cole through email after he was off work. Cole was in Denver, Colorado, being watched by his nanny while Michael worked on the rig. I said, well, how is your son doing? He says, well, he's doing okay. They emailed every weekend, he said. And he said his PlayStation broke, so, you know, he doesn't have much to do now. I said, oh, well, that's sad because I know how much these kids love uh, the PlayStations. My grandkids all love it. And I said, well, I'll send him a PlayStation so that he has something to do till you get back home. I ordered the PlayStation. I ordered an extra controller. I ordered the most expensive headphones and he sent me a shipping label three days later and it was to Rapid Aviation in Atlanta, Georgia. He said, you have to package it all in, in one box, put everything together. And I took a picture and sent it to him of everything that I had purchased. And I took it down to the mail stop and I mailed it. The second day, I just got to thinking, you know, I don't know about this. I tracked the package, found out it was delivered to a receptionist there at the desk, is what the label said. I waited another day, and then I said, I'm going to call. I'm going to call and see. She said, Ma'am, your package is here at our facility. It's been flagged because it's going to Africa. We will not be sending this package out. And I said, okay, well, let me think what I'm going to do. I think I just want it sent back to Amazon. I immediately got a hold of Amazon. I had been scammed with the PlayStation that I purchased, and could I return it? I think it was $1,800 was the, was the cost of it. So Amazon said, we will send you a mailing label. It won't cost you anything. You can forward this label to where the package is and they can mail it straight. It won't cost them anything either. So I said, okay, cool. But did it end? No. So I told him, I stopped your package from going to Africa. And he said, Africa? Are you kidding? It shouldn't have gone to Africa. 
And I said, and your name wasn't even on that package. It was somebody else's name saying, I'm sorry. You know, it shouldn't have happened that way. That my computer had been hacked. And so I got the wrong mailing label is what happened. And the next day he came back and said, sorry, I didn't text you. It's just been a mess here. One of my equipment broke down and I'm going to have to get another one. He sent me a picture and how much it costs that he was going to get from Ukraine. I think it was like $50,000 or something. And I said, I, well, I don't have $50,000. So then about a couple of weeks later, he had a problem because he didn't have any funds to access from his bank. He needed some food. So he sent me a list of, of food. And I thought, well, you know, I, I can mail him some food. It was a long, it was a long list. It was kind of comical, the different things he asked for. And then a day later, he texts me and says, oh, I hope you haven't gone and bought that food yet. Because my workers were telling me that some of that stuff is going to spoil. And I said, well, I'm not going to get the stuff that's spoiled, just the, the canned goods, the tuna, the stuff like that. And he says, well, just send me the money because there is a man that has a store in Mexico and he delivers to the ship all the time. And I was supposed to mail a check to him for $500 or $1,500, whichever I could do. And I said, oh, OK, well, send me his uh, send me that information. He says, no, I don't want to do it that way. Let's do it by Bitcoin. He taught me how to do Bitcoins. I sent him twelve hundred dollars to buy food. The total amount that I've paid him thus far is six over six thousand dollars. He said the project was finished. He's getting off the ship. He's going to go to a motel and we're going to video chat and this and that and the other thing. When he got off the ship, he says, I'm flying to you. Uh, could you pick me up? And I said, yes, I, I can pick you up. I said, what time did your flight come in? And he said it was at 2.30. Now, we still have not talked on the phone, video chatted or anything. I said, well, what is your flight number? I don't, I need to know your flight number in case, you know, you're delayed or whatever. And where are you coming from? And he says, I'm coming from Mexico City and I'm going to be on Aero Mexico. I was all excited. I was jumping up and down. By this time, we have professed our love for each other. I, I couldn't find a flight at all. And so... I text him again and I said, I can't find a, a, a flight number that comes in at 2.30. What is your flight number? Well, he took a picture of him sitting at the airport and there was a green and white plane in the foreground that had a weird emblem on the back. It, see, it looks like it says SJ. I mean, it was obvious that he was in an airport. It was probably pretty obvious he was, I guess, gonna fly somewhere. But I was I was all excited anyway. And I told myself, I said, Shirley, you don't have a flight number. He is not coming to San Antonio, Texas airport. I pay five hundred and fifty five dollars for a limo to take me from New Braunfels, Texas to San Antonio airport. He picked me up at twelve o'clock. The limo driver said, um, what's the flight number? And I said, oh. Um, he didn't tell me that. The limo driver says, do you know this guy? Have you ever met this guy? And I lied. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had been talking about getting married. So he kept calling me his fiance. And I said, yes, it's my fiance. Well, I stayed there till 430 that afternoon. And I parked my butt right by the door where the international arrivals are. I looked at every one of those people that came through that door. I mean, it was loaded with people. I mean, there was people coming through there all the time, you know, while I was sitting there. But I sat right there by the door, so I didn't miss anybody coming out of that international, because you have to go through customs. So that was the door they all came out of. And I looked for him. Um, he, was, he was not there. And I text him and I said, you lied to me. You're not coming. You're a liar. 
Well, and that's the end of the story, you would think. But no, <laughs> he said, I can't talk to you right now. I am being detained by the Mexican officials. And I said, oh, my God. And he said, I'll talk to you later. I was so worried about him. I just I could just see him in one of those Mexican jails or something. You hear God awful things about jails overseas. So I just thought the worst. He sends me a video and he's he's got a mask on. And he said that the, something that they let him use his phone to make this video. Hi, my love, Shirley. Oh, I requested a cell phone so I can make you this short video. Oh, I want you to know that I'm thinking of you always and I miss you so much. Take good care of yourself. Bye bye. The Mexican government wanted $10,000 to give him release. The reason they t detained him, he said, was because he found in a hull of one of the ships a bag of money that had over $10,000 in it that he did not declare. At first it was $45. That's all I need is $45. And I said, okay. And then he said, well, if you can make it uh, 150 or 200, you know, that would be good. So I sent it and he was, he was very thankful. He's asking me for $1,200. If I would send him that $1,200, he would be home to me in a week. I've never had any problem getting getting a man. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but for me to settle for somebody online that won't even try to talk to me and says he can't talk to me, it, it's just mind boggling. As silly and as asinine as it sounds, I'm not ready to stop talking to him. After our team received this video message from Shirley, we started to dig into everything right away. We ran a reverse image search and found the real man in the photos. His name was Philip out of Poland. He was a DJ and went by the stage name DJ Feel. Michael claimed he had a son. DJ Feel actually had two sons and a daughter and also a wife. We compared the voice of the video that was sent to Shirley of Michael in the airport to some of the videos of DJ Feel speaking and they sounded nothing alike to know that I'm thinking of you always and I miss you so much. Take good care of yourself. Bye bye. Или знакомым или еще кому, вы можете обломаться, потому что Apple остановила производство айфонов и айпадов. Прикиньте, впервые за 10 лет просто бац и все. И если сам не давай так We have so much more to fill you in on this story. After we go over all the information with Shirley, she later finds out who the real person is behind this whole scam. Make sure you stick around for the end. All the information we found wouldn't be possible without the tools on our site, socialcatfish.com. You can click this YouTube card or click the link in our bio. Just hitting like, comment, and subscribe helps us build more tools out for you to use in the future. After we sent all of this information to Shirley, she was still a little confused. It was time to sit down with her and put a stop to all of this. So we actually looked into Michael further, but Michael is not Michael. Michael is Philip. This is the man in the images. No, 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 I don't think so. Shirley was pretty confused when she heard that Michael was not a real person. Six months ago, she even hired a private investigator and he told her that Michael was real. This was not true. She also paid $2,500 to get this false information. You're still talking to Michael. Yes. Can you tell me why? I don't know. I, 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 I have this conversation with myself all the time. You know, I do love the man. You know, I know he's not who he says he is. I know his name is not Michael Roberts. There's, I mean, I've done so many searches on him and uh, pictures and what have you. Um, I, you know, he got me over a very hard period of my life. And I don't, I just can't stop talking to him. <laughs> it is absolutely crazy. I know, but um, I wanted after this conversation with you guys, um, I'm telling myself, you know, you gotta, you gotta quit because he's still asking me for money. He still says he's in Mexico right. detained. You know, he asked me for two thousand dollars about three weeks ago, and I have all these 
issues that come up on me that I lie about to him of reasons why I can't send him the money. This person has lied to you. Yes. He's cheated you out of money and he's going to continue to do that until yes. you I completely know. just break it off. He posted a picture on TikTok um, that uh, where he was under a waterfall and um, because he says he has no social media and I found his social media media and um, and someone asked a, a lady, of course, asked him uh, where that is. And he said it was in Bali. But this is Philip, correct? No, I, th I believe that is his picture. I, I don't think that's Philip. That's him. He does post a couple of things like the weight thing when he's lifting weights on TikTok. That is him. His actual picture on TikTok um, is him. The profile picture, that is him. Because I've seen him before. I've, uh, we've tried to um, uh, do a, a, a hangout call and I've seen his picture. I mean, I know that's him. I just, he, it just didn't stay there very long. So, so you're not talking about Philip at this point? No, I'm talking about Michael. Yes, that is actual Michael on that underneath that waterfall. It's not Philip. Up until this point, the reason she kept talking to Michael was because she thought Michael just looked similar to DJ Phil. The other profiles that she found were actually just other fake profiles of DJ Phil. He has hundreds of them all over the internet. Yes, I've seen him. I mean, we have tried to have a, a, a video call um, like three times and I've seen his picture. Um, I, I know it's him talking and he, he looks a lot like Philip. He, I mean, they could be almost twins. But if you look at his profile picture on TikTok, that he looks a little different than Philip does. But the actual man that you're talking to is neither Michael nor Philip. You don't think? I can almost, Shirley, I can almost guarantee you the person behind that profile looks nothing like Philip. Mm -hmm. Nothing at all like him. Well, I mean, I've done a lot of research. <laughs> I, uh, okay. The person that you were talking to on video was basically tricking you into making it look like you were talking to a person. So there's different types of technology that scammers use to make it seem like you're video calling uh, someone that they want you to believe that you're video calling. So we'll do like The Rock speaking. So you see The Rock here, right? Right. Now, what they'll do is, is they'll get rid of the audio. Now look at The Rock's mouth and listen to me talk. Hey, how's it going? I'm The Rock, I'm Dwayne Johnson. Hey, uh, how are you doing, Shirley? I miss you so much, I love you, and uh, I wanna be with you, and can you send me more money? Does that make sense? It does. So, you don't, so, so you're telling me that the pictures that I have are not, him at all. None of them. None I mean, of them. He doesn't even look like that. None of them. Shirley, would you would you be willing to block Michael right now? No. What do you feel no. that you need to I want him to know that I know. I, I, you know, I, I'd block him afterwards, but I want him to know that I know, and I want to hear what he says back to me, if anything. After this interview, Shirley finally came to her senses and confronted Michael. Michael revealed himself to Shirley. Shirley told us after seeing who was really behind the fake profile of Michael, she will never date anyone online ever again. Thanks for watching another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. Scams come in so many different forms. If you have been a victim of any of the scams below, please email us at sharemystory at socialcatfish.com. We'll get to the bottom of it with help from our Social Catfish team. By sharing your story with our YouTube audience, we can educate, spread awareness, and maybe someday we can put an end to these scams.